Hello, my name is Pixelated Twix and welcome back to my channel and welcome back for another final thoughts on a one and done series. This time we're going to be looking at Dragon Quest Builders 2. I know, I know, I know. I said that I was supposed to do this like a few weeks ago or I was supposed to do this a few weeks ago, but I'll be honest, I've had a lot on my plate lately and I finally got to sit down and kind of unpack everything I was thinking about this game. I will probably miss a few things but I have written down what I would like to discuss okay I, I have this written down but I promise you I will most likely miss something so charge it to my head and not my heart all right so let's get into this game yes first of all I want to say thank you melanin sims 2000 for suggesting this she has given me some some like awesome games to to take a look at and if you're interested in someone who um reviews or, or plays like alpha games uh, games are in alpha setting or beta stage by all means check her out i'll definitely have her channel linked in the description box below so do that all right okay so dragon quest builders 2 now this is the second iteration in the dragon quest Builders series but this is part of a family called Dragon Quest Heroes, I think it is. I've never played any of the games, guys, never. So you can take my nerd card, but I'm really not, usually not into JRPGs, but this is certainly a JRPG hybrid. Now this was developed by Square Enix and Omega Force, and it was released back in December of 2018. Now, I will not have any spoilers in this game. I realize this game is two years old, but I definitely do not want to spoil it for those who have not played it, like me, late bloomers, late bloomers. Okay, so let's get into a brief synopsis of the storyline. You start off as a apprentice builder, and you can be male or female. I will touch on customization in just a little bit. Um, and you are on a ship, and you're prison, taken prisoner with some other folks um and i from what i recall you're the only one left of the builder type people um and you are t you've been taken cap captive by the children of hargon they're a cult who worship this deity called hargon and no one's ever seen hargon no one knows what hargon looks like but they just know that hargon existed at some point in time um but they have continued the message that builders are bad and they worship destruction so you being the builder of course um are number one on their most wanted list and so you are being carted off to goodness knows where goodness knows where but you're on the ship and you're given some um little mini quests to kind of get you familiar with the controls of the game and things like that but you find out sooner or later that you're going to you're going to um go on this long quest of course anyone who loves a big epic movie you love the quest part well this is going to be your epic movie yes this game is huge this there's a lot of hours to put into this game and so let's let's discuss that let's discuss starting the game off all right so your character customization is kind of limited i'm i'm going to say limited because i'm very surprised when it comes to other jrpgs i'm not familiar with the actual genre but i've played enough um asian uh, mmos to know that their their customization the character customization is insane it's so detailed like you can you can change every bit every little bit of your character to make it the way you want this game is a little more lacking and it may be because of the art style it just may or maybe because the developers didn't want you to change too much of your character and that's fine too but i was a little disappointed but you still can you still can choose from um lots of colors for your hair um skin tones there are tons of those and um, eye color the palette is fairly large so um, i was satisfied in that regard and of course you have a few hair cells to choose from there and when you get into the game you do have a few more options to customize your character so you can have fun there too um but 
that's neither here nor there. I don't think that the customization is extremely important in this game, but I feel like if you're playing a role playing game or RPG, you know, it's always nice to try to play a character that kind of looks like you. Um, so anyways, not that important. I digress. All right, let's get into the combat. I want to discuss that because I will say that I enjoyed the combat for what it was. It had a very Dark Souls-esque feel to it. Um, not as difficult, I would say, as Dark Souls. Um, you did encounter a lot of easier uh, mobs, but there were some mini bosses scattered throughout the world on the islands. Um, and I would say that the combat was a little repetitive at most, most times, but you did learn um, you did learn different moves as you leveled up. So there was that part. And I loved that part that it felt like your character was growing or growing stronger. Um, and your weapons, um, you got new weapons as you leveled. Um, but you did kind of keep those weapons for a, a longer period of time. It was It's not the loot system that I'm used to in an RPG. And I think I was okay with that because sometimes trying to figure out okay what sword is this sword better than this one or this armor better than that it can be a little overwhelming sometimes and it can take away from the game but again that's part of playing a role in these particular games but this did not have that you were um you were given this that specific weapon at that time um and you just leveled up so like i said it felt like your character was growing and your partner in crime melroth who you meet very early on in the game he is also given different weapons and you make them for them and you give them to him and he is so appreciative of it let me just Put a pen here and talk about Malroth. Let me tell you guys something. I fell in love with Malroth. At first, I gave him a little side eye. I did. He he rubbed me the wrong way when we first met him, but your friendship grows. And that's one, one, another thing that I really appreciate about this game. You make real relationships with people in the game and they matter. So that is a big part of the story because things happen in the game and it makes you... Man, it makes you cry sometimes. Not even cry. Maybe not cry. Okay. I Maybe I was the only one. Maybe I was the only one that folded over a little bit or teared up. But you do have that those moments where you're like, oh my gosh, wow. So there are a lot of twists and turns. And um, the fact that you have these close relationships with the, the other NPCs in the game and they just don't feel like NPCs. They feel like friends. Uh, you make relationships. Those things matter. And... Um, I think that's what makes the story so great. It's not like a crazy, um, like the story is kind of, I wouldn't say the story is very basic, but um, because it's not, but it just adds to it, the relationships. All right. So um, I want to say that I want to go back a little bit. This is this is a single player game. It does have the single player campaign, but uh, there is an end game or there's another mode and that's your multiplayer mode mo meh, mode <laughs> where you can bring, I guess, three more of your friends on to your base island, which is the Isle of Awakening. And you will actually um, you will reach the Isle of Awakening very early in the game and um, you can come back and build on the Isle of Awakening with your friends or if you don't want to you can build by yourself to your heart's content so that's probably the only spoiler I will give you but there are 10 islands I think in the game and there are three other main islands besides the Isle of Awakening I will go over those briefly there's uh, Farrowfield um and that's the plains moonbrook that's a mining town it's kind of got an old west theme then there's of course your island of awakening and then there's crumble crumble dunn which is kind of the old Ar a king arthur um medieval uh, type feel to it and so they're all themed and i loved every single theme um i will say that crumble dawn gave me the run for my money um i love like the king arthur or um high fantasy 
type themes, but I really crum- crumbled on. I was literally done <laughs> with this game by the time I got out of there. But it was not. It was not the end, guys. Do not get comfortable in this game. Please don't ever get comfortable in this game because that's when it hits you when you start getting comfortable and you're in your zone you're building the game tells you nope the game slaps the basketball out of your hand like lebron (laughs) okay like nah nah you're not done here okay so i was definitely um i was definitely enjoying every minute of that um the surprises and i learned to kind of be ready to to go when uh the game called for now the music in this game is gorgeous um it's whimsical it's it's uh it matches your mood or it puts you in the the right mood at the right time and when there's combat of course you get your crescendos um and when there are sad moments of course the music gets quiet um and solemn so i really enjoyed the music too so we'll just briefly touch on that right all right so the building system in this game of course for those of you who are builders who play minecraft who play boundless who play the sims i'm sure a building aspect is very important to you as it is for me I will say that the building aspect of this game is amazing. Um, The reason why I say that is because if you're like me, um, you like items to, um, to, you like items in the game to actually be able to be used. And what I say that is if you have, okay, in this game, you can, you can put a place, a toilet in the, the building okay and people actually use a toilet i know that's kind of random but that's important if you place a stove they go and cook food for you um or cook food in general and people eat people sit down and eat food um and so i thought that was really cool it's the details guys it's the details but the fact that you learn new items as you go as you get in the game so your building progresses as right like your combat so um, you get more and more excited about building things. And every time you finish a major quest line, you go back to your Isle of Awakening and you can put that your new building skills into practice and you can use your new items and you can unlock items with, um, I forget if they're called, they're what they're called, but they're like hearts. And so you can place those items. Like I said, your NPCs use those items. So it's very cool to see the the items being used organically rather than just being some type of decorative item. Or in some games like your Minecrafts, like your Boundless, you have to use your imaginations and create those things or make the blocks look like those things. So yes, I don't mind using my imagination, but sometimes I just don't want to work that hard. And I'm grateful that um this game has actual items that you can use and that the npcs use yes all right so let's go into the questing and exploration because that goes hand in hand the game definitely has a lot of fetch quests um so if that's not something you're into this may deter you a little bit or may like annoy you but um while you're fetching um there's a lot of you encounter a lot of enemies some of them are repetitive but um there some of them are more dangerous than others uh there are many bosses throughout the world and some of them can one shot you so you have to be careful um you can always go back later in the game and come and fight them or take the challenge like i did and do a lot of your dodge and and stab stab dodge stab stab kind of thing um and I, I don't know if I said this, but the combat can be a little repetitive, but once you get the hang of it, it, you know, the idea of the challenging bosses kept me going in the fights, not so much the combat, but definitely the bosses because bosses obviously have different um, mechanics. And um, so you learn those mechanics. So they're almost like patterns. You ever played the game Punch Out? Kind of like that. I like it until punch out. All right, so um, the exploration is pretty cool. The, each island is fairly large. They're not um, they're not as large as I would say like a Minecraft world or even the planets with Boundless. I keep saying Boundless because I spent a lot of time in Boundless and I spent a lot of time in Minecraft. So Minecraft obviously is one huge world. Boundless is several planets, all extremely large. This is several islands. Um, they're 
fairly large, not extremely large. There's still a lot of exploration that can be done. And everything in this planet can be on planet. Everything on the islands can be destroyed. You can dig down as far as you can, I guess, to mantle. Um, so, And there are things hidden underground. So um, it definitely makes you want to explore little caves here and there um, or just dig and see where, what you can find. So I, I would definitely say that it has um, a small amount of exploration. And then, of course, some of the islands outside of your main islands, um, you will find that you, you do more exploring because you... Um, you do have a checklist of things that you need to find on these islands. Um, and the islands are small, but um, you find yourself still exploring little alcoves and nooks and crannies and things like that. So I enjoyed that portion. I do wish that the islands were a little bit bigger, but I understand um, that, you know, sometimes you can't just have it all. You can't. You can't. The questing, like I said, is very uh, can be a little bit fetch this, fetch that. But um, there's also quests where you go find um, certain NPCs and, you know, there's parts of the story that are require you to go out um, into certain areas. So I, I love that. Um, I love the idea that um, you do have little off, off island areas um, that you can't reach right away in the game. Um, you have to have a special um, item and you'll get that very early in the game as well. All right. So I think really that's all I wanted to go over in the game because I didn't want to go into the story too much because I will tell you this. If I say anything else, I will spoil the game for you. I really want to tell you guys more. Just be prepared for an emotional roller coaster and be prepared to just have a grand old time building and exploring and meeting new people and what have you. Really love this game. I'm still playing it. Um, there's still plenty of in game for me, even after the main game is finished. There's still more. And I'm hoping to see maybe a Dragon Quest Builders 3 in the future. I don't know. Is there one? I don't know. We shall see. All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you've played this game, let me know what you thought about it. If you played the other Dragon Quest Heroes games, please let me know what you thought about those. And if that's something that you think I should check out. Also, if you think I should check out Dragon Quest Builders, the first one. I don't know. Let me know. All right, guys. I, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Also, if you're not um, subscribed to the channel, I hope this will give you a reason to stick around by hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell. You know what to do there. All right. Until next time, I've been Pixelated Twix. Ciao.